Hello, my name is Josh Howard and I'm here with Hope Tech. Hope Tech is a community development nonprofit that has two main programs, Hope Tech and Hope Literacy. We're focused on creating accessible educational opportunities that fuel lifelong learning. Today we are going to begin a series on solidity. We see blockchain as a key future technology, but haven't learned much about it, haven't learned how to program or any of the development side of blockchain. And, um, and so I don't have all the answers, and so we're going to be learning together uh, as I create these videos. I'll be using the Solidity documentation as a reference, and we'll place a link in the description that you can use to follow along. I will be using the Remix IDE, which is an integrated development environment for creating each lesson. If I misunderstand something, I'll add corrections to it and comments in the descriptions. Our values at Hope NLC are be bold encourage and explore. My goal here is to demonstrate these values as well. We are boldly stepping into a new thing. We're, we're going to be learning how to program smart contracts and we need to be encouraging each other in that process. We're going to face difficult challenges and we need to constantly explore and ask the question why. Solidity is the language used to build Ethereum-based smart contracts. Smart contracts are used to create functions on the blockchain, and Remix is the tool that we will be using to create smart contracts. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over my view, the Remix IDE here. You'll notice here on the main page, uh, up here, it's the home page, there are a handful of things. There's Solidity, Optimism, Learneth, I don't know what that is, uh, Sourceify and more. I did click around on Learneth, and let's go ahead and take a look at that. Over here, you can see uh, some tutorials on Learneth. So this is kind of neat. You can go through here and essentially do what we'll be doing on this channel at your own pace. So if you feel like one aspect of what we're doing is going a little too slow, or you feel like uh, you want to repeat a concept, but you don't want to watch the video again, you can always come to here and look at the Remix Basics as well as the Solidity Introduction. As we move on, I think we will be getting to some pretty advanced concepts, but I think that this would be a great place to start and to reference as we continue learning Solidity and the Remix IDE. You'll also notice here on the left side, there's this column and there's a handful of buttons. And so let's go ahead and just click on each of these buttons to get a little bit more familiar with the environment. So on these two files, it's our file explorer. You'll notice uh, if I minimize that, there's contracts, scripts, tests, and readme. Uh, we're going to be focusing on a storage example today. This is where we can deploy and run transactions with a virtual machine. So we'll be able to create a contract and then test that contract out here. This looks like some stats. Let's see what this is. Unit testing, I don't know what that means yet. Uh, this is the Learneth piece I was showing you earlier. And then this is where we can add various plugins. You'll also notice a tab up here and it'll track the number of tabs in the left corner, which doesn't look like you can see that. So I'll bring it over here. So in this left hand corner, you can see the tab tracking of the page. And so I'm gonna remain zoomed in here on the page so that way you can see what I type. So go ahead and click on contracts and you'll notice there's this button here that says create new file. We're gonna click on new file and type in storage example. And you'll have a blank page here. So we're gonna start off with a simple contract. And this is a very basic example and this you can find in the documentation on the Solidity website and first we're going to make a note here. A uh, note is identified by two slashes and I'm going to just title it a simple smart contract. So this is our simple smart contract. So we actually haven't written in any code. One of the things I noticed within the examples in the documentation is a note for the license identifier. And so this isn't something that I know about yet, but we'll explore this in the future to understand what the different licenses are here within Solidity. But in their example, in the documentation, they use SP, SPDX license identifier GPL3. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just type that in as part of the example, since we're following along with the documentation, 
identifier GPL 3.0. Cool. Oops. 3. Point. Great. We're going to start with the first line, which is pr pragma solidity. In the documentation, it designates a range for the version of solidity. So when you do write your smart contract, you're writing within a certain release range. I'm going to go ahead and write it just for the most current range. And the way that you would do that is with this little hat, designate anything of this version and higher. 5.2, oops, 0.2, there we go. And if you wanted to write things within a range, you can look at the documentation I'll also write it in right here in my notes. So we would say greater than or equal equal to 0 0.4.16 and then less than version 0 0.9.0. 0. All right, so that is our first line of code. And the pragma keyword is essentially what uh, enables uh, certain compiling features. And the numbers here are related to the version, which I mentioned before. And so we can either do a range or we can say any pra version of Solidity greater than this version. Uh, so it just depends on who you're developing for and what you're developing for. And I assume that we're gonna be learning more about this as we continue through the documentation. So we'll just start with this, and then we're going to start our contract. So contract, and we'll call this contract storage example. All right, so we're gonna type in uint, uint, store store data after this we're going to call out the function So we've created our contract, and a uh, contract really is this collection of code and that resides on the blockchain. And we've created this unassigned integer or unit called store data. And then we launched a function and set that unit to the variable x. And so store data equals x here, and that this is public. And so we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step and we're gonna get that function. So first we've set it. And so I think what this will mean when we run this in the, um, we, well, when we compile it and then run it is we'll be able to set a value. That value is then stored on the blockchain and then we'll be able to get that value with the get function. And so this first function is to set that unassigned integer. Then we're going to set the get function to get that value. Well, actually, let's go ahead and try compiling this right now and see what it looks like. So I'm gonna click on this little button here. We have compile storage example, and then I'm going to click here, and then we will deploy this storage example. So here you can see the deployed contract. So after we had compiled it, I click deploy here, and then we'll just click this little down arrow. And look, we can set the integer, the unassigned integer to the number two. And then you'll notice in the bottom here, I don't know what all of this means yet, but I, I am assuming this is related to the integer being assigned to this uh, virtual address. Um, so we'll go back over to here. 
can realign this. And so now we want to be able to get that. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in function get, and then can this public view returns. to return our store data variable. I believe that's it. One thing before we move on to compiling, I just want to point out is that we do need these to be public in order for them to be viewable on the blockchain. If they aren't public, then they're not viewable. And so it would be difficult to interact with other uh, smart contracts. So now let's go ahead and compile this code. So we're going to click on compile storage example and that you'll see a little pop up in your screen. You can't see it in mine because I'm zoomed in. Um, and then we'll go over to here to deploy this. So you can see the deploy put button in my screen here. I'm gonna go ahead and click deploy and I'll scoot my browser up and you'll see deployed contracts are listed here. And when you click the down arrow, you'll be able to see our two functions that we just created. Uh, pretty cool. So we can set this unassigned variable store data to, let's say, actually, yeah, let's do number five today. And now you'll see this pop up. So it looks like it's okay. We've got a little green check mark. And then I'm going to click get and look at it says that we have the variable five stored at this address. It's pretty exciting. And so let's go ahead and try another number. Let's see if it works. 10. Set and we'll get that and it's 10. So there you have it. We have officially created, compiled, and deployed our first simple smart contract. Obviously, this contract doesn't do a whole lot. It just uh, stores and, and gets data, but it's a good start. I'm learning a lot already. I'm hoping that you're excited to join me on this journey and learn more and more about uh, how to program uh, and interact with the Ethereum blockchain and program in Solidity. If you enjoyed today's video, you can like and subscribe down below. You can also sign up for our newsletter at hopenlc.org.